Welcome, this would be our third class for NCRT class 6. We will be covering motions of the earth. Now, uh, the most important two motions that we are familiar with are the rotation and the revolution. Now, to explain that, consider this to be a sun and I have a small sized uh, earth here which is considered as a blue planet. So, you have the sun and the earth. If I say earth is rotating on its axis, that means it's rotating on its single axis that's the point that we have understood when we were discussing the globe so that motion is known as rotation however if the earth moves around sun in a fixed path we call this as revolution now because of rotation you have the day and night phenomena that occurs and because of the revolution you have seasons that occur now we'll understand this in detail as we move forward now the first thing that we'll understand today is the rotation as i said is the movement along its axis so you have the axis of the earth and the movement around the axis would be considered as the rotation earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation and that is known as the earth day now moving forward you have revolution as i said revolution is moving of earth around the sun so sun here is a stationary and you have earth that is moving around the sun and around earth you have moon that that is paired with the earth here so you have earth that is moving around in an elliptical path around the sun and that is known as revolution as i said revolution causes seasons and this is a fi fixed path in which it moves and that takes 365 days and 365 and 14 days now we have in one day you have 24 hours so in one fourth day you will have 6 hours now what I do is I add 6 hours 4 times and I get one day that's 24 hours again so what happens is for three years you have uh, for you have 365 days and you add the six hours and every fourth year you have a leap year where you increase the day by one and you have 366 days now when we calculate leap year you say it should be divisible by four but if it is in thousands it should be divisible by 400 so that's the way we calculate whether a year is a leap year or not so for a leap year you have 366 days and for a, a normal year you have 365 days so this is the basic phenomena of revolution now understanding what is an orbital plane the plane which is formed by the orbit of the earth is known as the orbital plane now the axis of the earth makes an angle of 66 and a half degrees from the orbital plane so you have the orbital plane and you have the axis of the earth the axis of the earth is at an angle of is tilted at 23.5 degrees and this axis which is the axis of the earth makes 66 and a half degrees with the orbital plane so that is where we understand the orbital plane now we have understood what is orbital plane the next important thing is circle of illumination now when we talk about circle of illumination consider this to be the position of sun so you have sun rays that are falling here now what would happen if the sun rays are falling and this is the earth you have the tilt of the earth that is here now this half region would have day and the other half region would have night and this line which divides the earth into two the day and the night would be considered as the circle of illumination so this is a three dimensional uh, picture of the earth if i cut it around the center i would have two hemispheres and that hemisphere would have a circular boundary and that would be the circle of illumination so beyond this this side would be day and this side would be the dark side or it would be the night now when this earth is taking a revolution it is going on to the other side of the sun what would happen is 
slowly and gradually you have rotation and revolution that are taking place together. So this portion would be closer to the sun or would be facing the sun and this would be day and the other portion which was day on the side when it was on the waist it would turn into night. So that is how you understand the circle of illumination. Now it's important that this circle of illumination does not coincide with the axis of the earth. As a result, you have the north pole which is here and the north pole you would have 6 months of day and 6 months of night. However, you would have south pole here which would have 6 months of day and 6 months of night and this region when it is illuminated it would be 6 months of day and here it would be 6 months of night and also if you have, uh, if you consider along the equator you would have uh, kind of equal distribution of sunlight that would be seen here and the inclination would change as you move towards the poles. So that is how we try to explain the circle of illumination but there is one important concept that you need to understand while talking about circle of illumination is that what would happen if earth does not rotate. If I am saying earth is not rotating on its axis I said sun is here, you have earth which moves from here to here and then I explain the day and night but I can explain this along the point itself because the rotation causes the day and night. So what would happen? You would have sun here, this would be day, the smiley side would be the day and the other side would be the night. Now what would happen when one rotation takes place? You would have this side after 12 hours you would have this side which would be day and this side would be night and this would continue to happen as and when it is revolving around the earth. So you would have rotation that is taking every day for 365 days. So every day you would have the phenomena of day and night. However, there would be change of seasons only when you have a revolution that takes place. So that is important to understand like you have sun which is coming from here and what would happen if the earth does not rotate. If the earth does not rotate and it's this part that is facing the sun always what would happen. This side would be always day and this side will be always night. In other words I would say this side would be extremely uh, get warm and warm and would become extremely warm. However the other side would become extremely cold and it would be kind of frozen. So what would happen if this is not rotating? If this does not rotate it would move in this fashion. So again when it's taking a revolution the same thing would happen. This would face the sun and it would be day and warm here and the other side would again be in the darkness and again would have a frozen and cold climate. So if there is no rotation that is taking place Despite a revolution which takes place, there would be one side which would be frozen and cold, another side would become extremely warm which is facing the sun always. Now these two were the general phenomena of the earth's motion that we are familiar with. There is a third phenomena that we need to understand and that is known as precession. Now to understand precession, you must be very clear about certain things that should form the background for precision. First of all, let's consider earth here. What would happen if I am seeing the earth from a point in a space which is top. Okay, So I am looking down on the earth from a point in space. What would happen? This earth would appear to move counterclockwise to the sun when I am outside the earth at a point in a space. If I am outside the earth looking straight forward to the earth what would happen? It would look as if it is spinning eastward. So when I say it is spinning eastward what would happen? When I am on the earth standing on the earth and seeing the sky moving I see everything moving westward that is because we consider the movement from east to west. So everything in the sky be it sun be it moon would appear to uh, move westward when I am standing on the earth. Now to understand this there was an idea that was laid down back in the time of Greek and that was 
mainly forwarded by Hipparchus and he was a Greek astronomer and a Greek geologist, geologist and what he tried to explain was that there is a third phenomena that exists and this phenomena is known as precision. Now whenever there is precision that occurs it's important to understand that there is a movement of the earth which is beyond rotation and revolution and which is of a kind of spinning of a top. So when you have a top that is spinning, it would have a circular motion and that circular motion would continue for, the sum, for some time and ultimately the spin would uh, wobble or move down and that wobbling, that wobbling movement. So if I say I have a pen and it's moving in this way, this fashion, it would be a kind of precision movement and that precision movement is explained here. Now it is said that precision, uh, when we talk about this is the axis of the earth and axis of the earth, if there is a precision along uh, the axis of the earth, it takes 26,000 years to complete. Now this animation is a big bit diverted from the scale because the rotation of the earth should be very fast because it's uh, taking every day for two 26,000 years so it should be very fast and in one degree could be moved in 72 years as per the precision of the earth. Now why is this precision caused? It is mainly due to the non-uniform gravitational pull that exists between the sun and the moon which they are causing on the earth and there is irregular bulge that takes place on the earth. As a result there is a wobbling that takes place. Now at present we explain that Polaris is our north pole or uh, sorry the north star. However after 13,000 years our north star would change to Vegas and again by 28,000 AD we would say our north star is back to Polaris. In between you would have 23,000 years where you would say the north star is Thumban. Now, all this variation takes place because of precision. When we talk about precision, there are two types of precision that we must understand. First is the axial precision and the next is the orbital precision. Now axial precision is completed in 26,000 years and there was another way which tried to explain the axial precision and that talked about that what happens exactly is this Axial precision was previously considered as precision of equinox and due to some theories which were given under the binary star theory or the dual model theory, it was considered it is the entire solar system that moves around some point in the space. That means that sun is also in movement along a common center star or another star, we could say it as a binary star or a dual star and the entire solar system is in movement. As a result, we consider 12 zodiac signs as our constellations and those 12 constellations, every month you would have one constellation that would be seen or that would be visible. That was what was considered under the ancient beliefs and they tried to explain that this is because of the axial precision of the earth that is taking place and they called it as precision of equinoxes where, where they tried to explain how there is change in the constellations that takes place and the north star that we talk about changes with time. So Vegas would be in different constellation, Polaris would be in different constellation. By around 7500 AD you would have Alpha uh, Cephi that would be in the Cephi constellation. So that means you would have different constellations that would happen with the change in the uh, in the axial precision that would occur. The next precision that was explained was the perihelion precision or what we call as orbital precision. Orbital precision takes 71,000 years to complete and this believes you have the orbit of the earth that is changing. So it explained that it's the orbit of the earth that is changing and this was the prior orbit and this is a new orbit that is taking into place. 
and because of these two precision the perihelion precision and the axial precision there is a kind of important features that happen in our solar system one of that which is known as is known as the milankovitch cycle and this milankovitch cycle talks about the changing contrast between the seasons and the impact of glaciation so it mainly talks about glaciation and changing contrast in the season now this milankovitch cycle focuses on three aspects first is the eccentricity that's the shape the next is the axial tilt that's the obliquity or the oblique nature and finally you have the precision now when we talk about eccentricity the most important thing is the eccentricity takes about 100000 years so you have 100000 or 1 lakh years in which you have the eccentricity that is completed then you have the axial tilt that takes about 41000 years and that is the average of uh, that is uh, calculated by the orbital precision as well as the axial precision and finally you have the concept of precision or the wobbling and these three together govern the milankovitch cycle which affects the glaciation and the contrast of the season that exists now <clears throat> this was something to do with the uh, perihelion precision and we have talked about two types of precision we'll be considering milankovitch cycle in detail in a further lecture now the next important thing is due to the revolution of the earth you have seasons that come up and you have the solstices and the equinoxes that happen now solstices can be divided as summer solstices and winter solstices under summer solstices you have 21st june as the summer solstices so what would happen in the north hemisphere north hemisphere would have the longest day and shortest night on 21st june coming back on the uh winter solstice you have 22nd december as the winter solstice and what would happen in the north hemisphere would be shortest day and longest night and the reverse happens during the uh in the south hemisphere for both the equinoxes uh, sorry both the solstices now coming to the equinoxes you have the autumn equinox and the vernal equinox now when we talk about the 21st march and 23rd september these are the equinoxes now 21st march in north hemisphere is the vernal equinox or the spring equinox however in north hemisphere it is 23rd september which becomes the autumn equinox so you have the concept of solstices and equinox which is explained by this diagram so you have the equinoxes where you have the equal days and nights however the solstices be it summer or winter you have the maximum difference in the extreme day and night condition so you have maximum difference the shortest days and the longest nights and vice versa that happens during the solstices and towards the equinoxes you have equal day and equal nights so with this we cover the basic topic of the motions of earth we'll be covering the next chapter of ncrt in the next lecture uh for the complete ncrt series you can join our uh, uh, youtube channel you can subscribe to our channel and for any doubts you can leave those as comments below the topics that we have touched here uh, specifically the precession and the milankovitch cycle we would be covering in detail mainly for the earth sciences students in the separate lesson uh, you can stay tuned for those have a good day ahead